<laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to this global GEG broadcast. We'll be making a start shortly. And while we're waiting for everyone to arrive, why not head into the chat, let us know who you are, where you're from, your Twitter handle, and if you've got any questions that you'd like us to answer during the course of this evening, let us know there as well. Also, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button to make sure you stay up to date with all of the events being organised by us at Global GEG. We'll be making a start really soon. Thanks for joining us. Welcome, everybody. Hi, John. Woohoo! Welcome. Hello. <laughs> so Are you being we, nervous? No, no. We're never we know you show up right on time. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing some emergency PD for an English teacher. Oh, good. All right, so we are live, John. Yeah, we are live. I love it. Everybody. We are so excited to have John here. He is the Edu Protocol King. Steph, do you want to share how you have used Edu Protocols in your own classroom? Sure. I won't kill the joy. Like, I, I won't steal the thunder here, but I just want to say that I am so excited um, about having John on. And I, yes, yes. Okay. Um, I have both books, FYI, um, oh, okay. in my classroom that I can't get to right now. So, um, but I have both. And I first actually um, met John when I was when I went to Q, the Q conference and um, went to a Q Bold session that um, my tech director Tracy Bondi said you have to go you have to go I love Tracy yeah we yeah. Went. so I went to so I went to a Q Bold session and after that I. I had all of these takeaways because I went to a session where I just started to learn, oh my gosh, this is just a way of, of having a structure, a template, something that I could apply to any part of either a lesson or even a whole unit the way I dream it out. Um, and it helped me so much as both an English teacher and a yearbook teacher. Probably my favorite that I've used in many forms is thin slides over and over and over again. Um, and it feels magical and it's quite simple. And that's what I love about it is it's a simple technique that then helps drive so much that you can do. Um, and it's just changed my thinking around how I implement things in my own classroom. So thanks a lot, Joe. And this is zero, awesome. zero prep for you. It's more work on the students. All of these edu protocols is one reason I love to introduce them to teachers because they don't have to do anything. It's all on the kids. Mm -hmm. So thank you, yep. John, for doing that. <laughs> what do you think, Stacey? Yeah, I was going to say I like the thin slides. That's it's you make it approachable. You make it, you know, all about the kiddo and then you step back. It's very hard to do that as a teacher. It. You want to, you have so much love and concern that you overmanage. Um, and it's not even micromanage, it's just over concern. And then you step back and watch the magic. <laughs> yeah. And that's the weird paradox of it, right? Is less is more because you think if you prepare more, the kids will learn more. But the reality of it is we're overloading them and they're spending huge chunks of their days just listening. And so like uh, the protocol thing came, you know, and it was birthed partially for me and partially for Marlena. But, you know, what I learned from coaching, uh, I did a little bit of coaching at Fresno State when I was done playing and reps are the thing. Talking to players will not give you the reps. And then if you've watched coaches ever, if they practice what would you would call scrimmaging or whole group, if they practice that too much, they're going to lose their games because... Mm -hmm. They don't have the basic skills. So a good example for this is I see teachers that are like, we're going to go PBL. I love PBL. PBL is great. But you can't go from kids just sitting and doing worksheets all day to PBL because they don't know how to actually search. They don't know how to actually write a paragraph. They can't make a presentation. They don't have to make a web page. They don't know how to do anything. And I've seen this, and I, I bet you will agree. I've seen teacher after teacher go, we're going PBL. And six months later, like, eh, it didn't work. I went, that wasn't the kids' fault. That was that you didn't train them off. The yeah. analogy I like to use for that is like Thanksgiving dinner. If your mom comes to you and goes, you're doing all of Thanksgiving dinner this year. That's a thing, man. You're not ready for that. Like, And you, your answer should be, can I just do the mashed potatoes or the green beans? And I'll get back to you next year once I got the cornbread down. <laughs> you can't go from an eater of Thanksgiving dinner to making the whole thing in one move. And when we try to go from the worksheet mentality, uh, or as I like to call it, test and punish, uh, then and then go to this open-ended, creative, risk-taking 
thinking conversational world, they're not ready for that. They are not ready for that. So this, the beauty of this is that it gives you a step in and it give it gives you a way to start to be able to do that. And as someone who um, who helped to co-lead a project-based learning pathway at my school, as we take in new teachers or as we start to kind of bleed out from our own pathway and other teachers are trying things, the way that you just described that, that metaphor is exactly right. We'll say, well, why don't you try it out with one project or in one unit, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. right? And then slowly they realize, oh my gosh, that was so much better. Now what else can I do? How do That's I think- That's the key I word there, what have you got, right? Mm -hmm. And so to stay with the food analogies, have you had a friend drag you to a restaurant that you were not feeling it? Like, mm -hmm. you're like, bro, I don't want Thai food. <laughs> Whatever that is, I don't want it. And then you're done with the appetizers and you're like, I think I'm, I think I'm food drunk. Mm. I think I need more of this. When are we coming back? <laughs> and so I think we need to do the same thing with teachers and kids. You have to hook them with something cool and then give them time and then reel them in. And I, I tell people all the time to go from a straight up being a handout handouter or a deliverer of curriculum um, to fully enlightened teacher is really about a three year process. Mm. You can get really good in six months. But you only get to have the first week of the year one time a year, which means you're not going to be good till you've done it three times, right? So can mm -hmm. I share a couple of quick slides? Would that be okay? My screen share? Yes, go ahead. Just in and case there's some new folks in. And how do I chat with all these crazy people? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, it, there, there are chat coming in like crazy. Yeah, and there are a lot of hellos. Yeah, we're gonna we'll pop them in there for you. When you're sharing your screen, you likely won't see it unless you're on two devices there. Yep. Um, so we. Oh, will I have a gigantic them. monitor. I can see both. Oh, you're amazing. <laughs> okay. So um, this is. I, I want to do just a few slides to kind of set the pace for new people, right? That are like, this sounds awesome. What is it? So basically, this is our motto: teach better, work less. Like we are not getting the results we should be getting. We are working super hard for basic results. And the basic setup is this. Um, if you look at these three boxes, uh, let me drop in an arrow there real quick. Um, if you look at these three boxes, this is pretty much what most of us experienced in school, which was, uh, I'm gonna get a lecture. I'm going to get questions at the end of the chapter. And then um, I will give you a grade someday. Uh, it's a it's very variable ending to that, right? And so this is what we propose in Edge of Protocols. Let's start with some work. I'm going to ask you one or two quick questions, four or five quick questions. I'm going to grade it and give you feedback now. I'm going to see the pattern and give you direct instruction now. And then we're going to do a couple more problems immediately. So jump in. I'll comment on that with my 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 Stacy and my team. Does that resonate with you guys? Yeah, I mean, when I was in school, it was a lot of direct instruction, do the work, and then feedback, like you said, was later. So it was a day later, right. a week later. It was not immediate. You might even get good job as a grade, and yeah. I don't know what to do with that. Right. I think the hardest part when I think about it, right, like where's the motivation to ever want to get better or do it again or try? Mm -hmm. Like what's the point of feedback if it's at the very end and I can't do anything with it? Where I'm like, yeah, and that's that's, it. that's one of my favorite quotes that a lot of teachers tell us, and you guys have probably had a similar experience where um, kids will literally look up at them and say, "We're getting better," and they're surprised, and the teachers are like, "Wow, I've never I've been teaching ten years and no kid has ever said we're getting better." Like the kids are surprised they're getting better. You know, John, we grew up in the '70s. You and I, um, all these youngsters in the world, and and it was like that back then. We had project-based learning, and we had that kind of instruction, and then it kind of went the wayside once we hit the '80s. And it's funny well, it was, it was even more than that. It was no child left behind ran that all into a ditch oh, yeah. because it made it basically uh, put the art of teaching in the back seat and said, "Get through the book." Yeah. We were, and we were, so we have we have a generation of teachers who thinks that they equate getting through the book with being good at teaching, and they're not at all alike. Or test scores with failing failing as a, as a teacher. That's what's really tragic. Yep, yep. So this is a, a this is I want to give you guys a scenario. This is a teacher in SoCal. She was a mid year hire, so she took over her class in December. She didn't have her credential let yet. And this is what her class was, 16% passing on the big mama, on the on the CASP. 
Um, she told her dad in December, I don't think I want to be a teacher anymore. And he said, you've only been a teacher three weeks. She goes, yeah, but I, I didn't think this is what it was going to be like. Mm -hmm. So he bought her the Edge of Protocols book. And this is what her end of the year test scores look like, you guys. 55%. She quadrupled her scores. And see where it says RSP up there? This is a resource class. She actually ended up five points ahead of her grade level on the CASP. And that was between January and April, she got that done. And if you're saying, well, that's fine for ELA because English. How about this? This is her in math. 3% passing is what she inherited. And these are the same kids compared, okay? She quadrupled the score in math, okay? And this is the one I really like down here. Her nearly met went from 37% to 58%. So 60% of her class is within spitting distance of passing. I could feel good about that if I'm a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. And she said it was a breeze. It was super easy. This is Scott Noons. He runs the TNT EdTech podcast. In his school, and this is now high school, their department went up 43 points on the on the CASP, which if you're from Texas, that's the TAS. They went up 43 points. Ladies, have you ever seen that in the newspaper? Superintendent announces scores up 43%. Never. No. Never. What it says in the newspaper is scores up 2.7 because mm -hmm. they're trying so hard to round that to three. So hard. Okay. <laughs> Check this out. Students with disabilities went up 50 points. And, wow. and he also said socioeconomic went up a ton. I wish you'd have gave me the number, but I'll go with a ton being good. Right. So these are kind of the results that people are getting. So remember, this is the teach better part right? Scores going up, up, up. And I'm going to throw mm -hmm. Diane Mapes under the bus. She may even be in here at this point. <laughs> 30 years in teaching, zero photocopies this year. And that's where that sassy face comes from. Okay. <laughs> 30 years in teaching, not one photocopy. And she told me that basically her whole class has A's because of the way that she's teaching now. I'm pretty good with that. Right. And then this is from Adam Moeller. He's from Cincinnati. I had to share this. I did eight parts today. My first period, his first period had four kids from last year that like looped through with him and they totally terrorized the assignment. The other 20 struggled. And he said it was very interesting to see that. So if you look at the quote, this is from her feaster. I don't know the guy, but somebody tweeted it at me and they said, this is totally you. Frequency trumps duration for interventions. Frequency trumps duration in interventions and in learning any new skill. So here's a, another concrete example of what I'm talking about. Timed math. Usually timed math gives people a visceral reaction. Uh, there's a group that's super into it and there's a group that hates it. But do kids need to know their times tables? Yes. <laughs> How do we do it most of the time? They do their times tables, I collect them, and then I hand them back later. So when's the feedback and growth? Never. If you take timed math and put that into quizzes, like what Lisa Nowakowski and Corey Orlando did, they took their kids, third and fifth grade, from 38% on times tables to 96% in three weeks. They did them three times a day in quizzes, and the feedback was immediate. 96%, you guys, 96%. That's 60 points of growth in about three or four weeks. And then I'm jumping on to Thin Slides, and then we can get back to just doing conversation. Thin Slides is basically a KWL activity. My favorite. My except, <laughs> yeah, except I'm going to quote several people on the internet. We're going to teach like Google exists. So basically, the game, the game goes like this. Every kid gets one slide. Every kid gets three minutes to add one word and one picture. Today's word is parallel. Today's <laughs> word is magma. Today's word is slip strike fault. Today's word is osmosis. Every kid gets three minutes to build one slide, okay? One slide in three minutes. And then um, they get four seconds to share, which means in five minutes, I can take kids from zero to awesome on any vocab. What's my planning time, Stephanie? Zero. I just need a word and I'm gone. I just That's need it. a word. One can second. I can opening the door to my classroom and going, wow, we should do parallelism. And I'm done. <laughs> Lesson plan's done. And, yeah, and that, so, the main takeaway that like that I got from thin slides in addition to that was, and it was, it was like life changing, but it was so simple was mm -hmm. I need to be the owner of all the slides. 
So I, that that for me was a game changer that I make them um, for my classes. I have like a class set. It's got everybody's name on it. I reuse and reuse and reuse that. Sometimes I put a template in there for them, right? Like yep. that just became a protocol that was so simple. And then all my students know, oh, let me go find my slide and do my thing. And it was like yeah. such a time saver. So this one is by the amazing Stacy Young. Now, she, now I'm going to blow y'all's minds right now. If you do four or five protocols in one Pear Deck or mm -hmm. one AirPod, what's your grading like at the end of the day? Ooh. And what's your prep for tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. We're going to math prep every day. So this is what Stacy <laughs> Young did. Uh, this is a thin slide on Shinto shrines. So she gave the kids something to read, wow. and then they drew them. Look how artistic they are. That's so cool. And she could do the same thing tomorrow on Samurai and the day after on uh, uh, Cherry Blossom and the day after on Mount Fujiyama. Her prep time's almost nothing. The keywords are just guiding her through. The kids are doing the lift. It's amazing. It's really amazing. So that one's that. And then the math reps, if you guys haven't seen this one, uh, this math rep on the side here is one of the kinder uh, level ones. And so what we're doing with math reps is eight or nine activities in one thing and the only thing that changes is today's number so if you can see their daily number uh so this is the only thing that changes right so daily number kids do the same work every day except tomorrow's seven and the next day's eight and the day before is four and we move them around so this is what amanda sandoval did this is one slide in pear deck 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 so she lined them up in order mm -hmm. And they did, they just did one a day. So that's awesome because they're just doing one math rep a day. What's my prep? Nothing. I just changed the number and it's just one slide at a time. I want to wrap up with this one. Big shout out to Marlena Heber. And she invented this one, which is um, number mania, which is in book two. And basically what we do in number mania is every kid gathers how many numbers and how many facts mm. and they cite their source. But what instead, like, okay, let's do teacher talk. If I said to you guys, hey, I need you to gather 35 facts. How long are your kids going to want to do that? <gasps> yeah. First yeah. of all, they're going to be like, you're killing me. Uh -huh. So with number mania, what we do is we make a Google form. And it says number, name, fact, source. That's all it says. And then I point the kids at a certain web page, like this is the Battle of Leyte Gulf. So I could point them to a really good U.S. Naval History page or Wikipedia, whatever. Each kid gets how many facts, you guys? One. Why Those all jump into a shared spreadsheet, which is view yeah, only because I don't want you touching other people's numbers. Now, each kid goes in and grabs five or six of their numbers and builds mm -hmm. an infographic. I love that. What's my prep time, you guys? Zero. Once, I, Zero. once I have the form built and the spreadsheet built, I just clone, 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 right? Yeah. So this is one example from Scott Petrie. His kids did it. And look at this is an AP class, you guys. There, and what there's, a great way to actually model real collaboration, right? Yep. That, yep. that we are all working towards something that we then can all use to create something yeah. after. It's real collaboration because everybody just needs one fact. And mm -hmm. I've heard people say, oh, what if one kid doesn't do one? I'll know because on the list, he will get zero points for fact collecting. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what if five kids have the same fact? We got 35 facts. Spread it around. If we get the same fact six times, I need to teach the kids to look better or that's a really important fact. But mm -hmm. there's no bad part. Mm -hmm. And then and then uh, this teacher right here, I'll make this one bigger because uh, of our format. This is Mrs. Palomares. Look what her kids did on Battle of Britain. Look at the differentiation on each slide. That's fantastic. Yeah, and this is it. super, this is one period, you guys. This wow. I, I've gotten this done in 30 minutes before with kids. And here's the best part. Here's the super crazy edge of protocols wrinkle. This is the opening lecture. What? What? Wow. I'm not going to build up to this. I'm going to start with this because then they'll all be asking me about the Battle of Britain for the next three days. Love and that. here's one more example that's really beautiful from Jill Dahl. This was great. She had her kids uh, researching uh, whether juveniles should be charged for crimes or not as adults. So those slides right there are what the kids made wow. in one or two periods. That's super legit. 
And plus, if you're going to be an adult in our society, being able to read infographics is a pretty big skill. So I think that's enough screen sharing for me. Yeah, that's enough. I'm going to stop screen sharing. Let me see where I do that. You know, John, when you were talking about um, times tables and stuff, and that's like, you know, the big data is rote memory, and blah, blah, blah. And it's not like we've kicked rote memory out the door. It's just that you completely changed how you expect it from a kid. Mm -hmm. Well, if you tell nine-year-old John to study his flashcards, I'm going to lose my flashcards. <laughs> exactly. That's what's going to happen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose them. And then I won't have to study. So the trick with protocols is, well, let's assume that they are all going to act like me, yeah, right? And let's practice them in class, and let's not end up with stacks of worksheets that we, let's be honest, we don't yeah. want to look. Nobody wants those. No, 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 no. So we just turn it into lots of quick hitters, and then we make them more sophisticated as we go. I'm going to go back to the Thanksgiving model, right? I don't start with the turkey. I do not. I buy that turkey at Boston Market. Right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm not going to be making that bread fresh. Those those heat and serve rolls. Uh, <laughs> I did do the mashed potatoes and the green beans, though. I hope you like those. Right? And then next year, I'm like, I should try a practice turkey, maybe a Cornish game hen just to get into the mode. Right? But I'm not going to try to come right out of the gate on this thing. I am not. And so the Edge of Protocols mindset is allowing for iteration. Here's one of the other subtleties for some newbies uh, that are listening to this is, and I'd love to hear if you guys do this. The way I do it is, you get points for participation every day. I'm not focusing on perfection until the fourth or fifth rep. Day one is fill it up. Day two is fill it up. Day three is you fill it up, you get five points. I know who to stand by, you guys. Mm -hmm. I know. I, I, I totally I agree. know the people. Yeah. I know the people. Mm -hmm. But then on Friday, I do this. It's game day. It's game day. I might even have, I might even have a disco ball going. Today? Mm, all that is going to pay off because y'all are going to get A's. Let's do this. Totally different affect for the class. Totally. So speak to that, Stephanie. How's that working for you? No, I, I so agree with you on that. Like I, That's why I was like nodding along. I'm like, yes, say it, John. <laughs> because I, because that's, that's my class. Be, um, I never feel like it is my place as a teacher to be grading them on something that I haven't helped skill build for them. Right. Like, yeah. why would I why would I throw them in the deep end like that? My whole job is to help them grow. So yep. for me, if they are working towards that, then I need to honor that in the way that I grade them. And then when we need to get to a place where we really are assessing that it is an opportunity for feedback and continuous growth, that it shouldn't just feel like a throwaway in any of those moments. And so I just I appreciate your process because I will. And then now I'm going to tell, tell you a joke that only teachers get. Right. Yeah. OK. Right. The district has announced we're going to do a new round of assessments. <laughs> yeah, right? I love that that's your joke. <laughs> that, that's your joke. Because they, they are going to give me two things. Here's what they're going to tell me. The district has purchased this amazing assessment tool, which has nothing to do with what you do every day. And you will have to learn new logins and, and all that, right? Or the district does this. The district has decided that the teacher should make them. Oh, great. You just wrecked 20 of my weekends. I <laughs> love it. Here's the other beauty of Edge of Protocols. Dude, if I've been doing math reps for three weeks, the assessment is to do a math rep. <laughs> pick your own number. Yeah. Right? That's the math rep. Uh, pick the biggest number you can, go. The assessment is going to be exactly the same thing as the work you're doing, except I'm not going to help. Can you imagine this in a history class? Make an Iron Chef on your favorite thing this quarter. You make the whole thing. You design it, five slides, one period, let's go. And Ooh, so- you just teased it. What's Iron Chef for those who don't know? It's You're my right. favorite protocol. I, I did that, didn't I? So I um, Iron Chef is basically, if you guys, this is the story of Iron Chef. I went through my, my college, uh, my induction classes, right? And they made us do reciprocal teaching. They made us do jigsaws. And I thought, wow, this is really cool. Then I tried it with 35 kids. Not as cool. Because how do you grade this? How do I grade 35 jigsaws? Like, I'm not going to spend three weeks grading that. And I already buy into the fact that kids don't care three weeks from now. So I noodled on it and I noodled on it and I noodled on it. And we were driving to Apple one time on a field trip uh, with some of my teacher friends. And we we're like, we need to make lessons that are like game shows. And so we said, let's think of some game shows and work backwards. And so my friend said, Iron Chef. And I was like, okay, let's think about that. Mm -hmm. So you have a time limit mm -hmm. and you have a secret ingredient, must put abalone in all items. <laughs> uh, and there's structure. This is how I know if I've won. 
And I go, oh my God, that's a freaking jigsaw. So imagine this, five slides, one slide per kid. And what I love about this is if Stacy comes up lame, if her slide sucks, it doesn't wreck the whole project. It's just Stacy's problem, right? So each kid does how many slides? One. I start simple, one picture, three uh, phrases or facts, don't copy paste. And then the secret ingredient. And this really messes people up. The secret ingredient, you, do you guys know that kid that when they're done with their project, they're like, okay, victory lap. <laughs> and they're walking around talking to every kid like, oh, what are you doing? I need you to sit down, brother. So, are you in my class, John? Like, uh, <laughs> I, got, I got 17 years in the classroom. I've seen it all. <laughs> so the, the, the secret ingredient is an additional thing about the topic of the day. Mm -hmm. So if we were doing the history of In-N-Out Burger, which would be a great opening Iron Chef because kids are surprised at some of the facts, the secret ingredient for today would be your secret menu item what's your favorite one and if i get 97 animal style cheeseburgers i'm like y'all are boring where where are the cheese fries where's the flying dutchman where's the where's the onions three ways where's the affogato i got that from david terrio do you know you can get affogato at in and out no nope. you put ice cream in your coffee we don't yeah. have in and out in ohio Okay, oh, well, wow. try the Burger King. Exactly. You have to make you a milkshake and it's put some coffee. Same. It is not the same. <laughs> so anyway, here we got way off point. But bottom line is a picture <laughs> of a picture of your thing from the history of In-N-Out. So if you had the history, you might have the picture of the first ever In-N-Out Burger mm -hmm. in Baldwin Park in 1954. Not that I'm a geek. And then you might have three facts. Uh, burgers are 25 cents to employees uh, off of Highway 10. And then your secret ingredient is onions three ways. Do you guys know what onions three ways is? Raw. They will give you raw, chopped and grilled, and then mm -hmm. whole grilled. All on the one to get three totally different flavors. Mm -hmm. So each kid builds one slide. One is the history of in and out One is the most popular items. One is uh, uh, items uh, that sold in the store, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so each kid builds one slide. I give them 10 minutes. And this is part of the hashtag panic now concept. <laughs> if, if I give kids 45 minutes to make one slide, ladies, how long are they going to spend working? <laughs> two. <laughs> they are going to, so, so two it is. If two is the, all you need at the end, we'll just skip that middle part and go right to the end. Panic now you get, so I give them 10. I give them 10 because yeah. they have to do a little research. And, and John, then you start on something that, that's super entertaining first. The history of the that. Nike swoosh. Mm -hmm. Where do Pekingese poodles come from? You know, something goofy and fun like that. And then uh, they get 10 minutes. Everybody builds one slide. So dig this. This is a very purposeful part of it. Kids roll into my class. 10 minutes in, everybody's made a slide. Each group gets two minutes to present. And this is the next thing where teachers screw up. You do not go to the front of the room. I don't got time for that. You just present right from where you're at, bro. I don't need the victory lap. I don't need the, woo, look at me. I'm going, I, where's the clicker? You share it to me. I'll be your clicker. You get two minutes. Shut her down. Because I want every group to have presented and built within about 20 minutes. I still have 30 minutes left to clean that mess up. There was one question. Oh, sorry. When you're done, Seth, go ahead. I use that time trick with everything. Oh, yeah. Like it's not even an edu protocol. And I'm just like, nope, we're only going to do 10 minutes. And yep. then if they need more time, maybe I will give it to you. And see, I never do more time. What I say is tomorrow's going to suck less. Yep. Yeah. And that's the power yeah. of the reps. That's the power of the reps is they get to see where they failed. I don't want them on the bus tonight going, yeah, Cripple, he met me up, man. Cripple, he not I don't want to do more Iron Chef. I don't want that. I want them going home saying, I'm going to kick that thing's butt tomorrow. I see what he's yeah, doing. Next I see time. where you're going with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they know that. So there's this sweet spot. And it's also, I need to say, because there are teachers that have a lot of empathy for kids. It is also not about rushing them. It's about what is the sweet spot? Enough time, but not too much. I never give them extra time though, because once you start that, it is, if you give a mouse a cookie it all day. Yeah. So try it, Stephanie, just tell them yeah. you'll do better tomorrow. Five points for playing. You'll do better yeah. tomorrow. Exactly. I often say where, where you where you are is where you are, and we're just going to go with that. Um, yep. But there was a question in there that I thought would be a good almost transition from Dr. Ed. He asked, <laughs> what does the transition from a quick entry to a more depth through inquiry look like? Or I'm assuming from that. 
<laughs> okay, so you have different protocols for different levels. So thin slides is just to get the vocab word in. Uh, fast and curious is just to um, get the concept in. All of those things predate lecture. Your lecture will be twice as well listened to. Can I get an amen from the crowd? Mm -hmm. After the Iron Chef, they want to talk all about it. All right. So there are, I'm giving you guys some of the easy protocols. And I love that Ed asked this question. Um, there's two answers to this question. One is I keep adding complexity. So imagine what I just said for Iron Chef was one picture and three facts and a, a secret uh, thing. If I'm Scott Petrie teaching AP history, it could look like this. I need a title. I need a subtitle. I need two parentheticals and I need textual evidence. I just crank up the skill level. So that's complexity. That's not necessarily depth because it's still a quick hitter, right? Complexity now goes like this. Enter the mini report, or as Kim Vogie calls it, essay that don't hurt. I love that title. And so the mini report is basically what we do. It's almost like a scrum activity because what I do is I give the kids guaranteed information. They break it down in a group. I moderate it at the whiteboard. We make sure that we have five or six facts in each of what are called the focus areas. And then that's today's work is to basically build out everything for one paragraph today. Tomorrow we'll build out the second paragraph, mm -hmm. third paragraph, fourth paragraph, right? And GEG -E Kentucky, yes, worksheets do suck. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> if you want another acronym though, that's more parent friendly, call them shut up sheets. That's also, that's also, a and Hans Tolman in there. So, Love you, Hans. <laughs> so imagine this, imagine this on Monday, we do, we group mini report one paragraph about the, um, the top 10 eruptions of all time. I'm doing like fifth grade right now, fourth grade. Mm -hmm. Day two, we do types of volcanoes. Day three, we do what it takes to be a volcanologist. Day four, we do the ring of fire. And day five, we do uh, dormant and possibly active volcanoes in California. So it's the death of a thousand cuts. We only did one paragraph a day. We crowdsource it to make sure we were good at it. And then on day five, we've got a five paragraph uh, nonfiction, you know, report format thing ready to go. That's only on the first round. If I do that five more times, mm -hmm. I almost don't have to do anything. On the sixth or seventh time, I just say, what do you want to do? Because they've internalized the metaphor at that point. And that's, and that's how, huge. How often so I hope that answers. Feedback? Oh, about every three minutes because I'm yeah. TWA teaching. Do you guys know what that is? This is my coffee. Teaching I'm walking that. around. I'm getting my yeah. <laughs> Teach mm -hmm. walking around. Mm -hmm. yeah. I am moving and grooving. I am not waiting for kids to fail at the end. I'm fixing them on the fly. Love That's that. Where before in ESSA, you would get feedback after a week, and you've oh, been working on it for a month after you turn it in. Let's wind that all the way back. If you are going to have an essay due three weeks from now for your principal, what are the odds you're writing that essay the night before? <laughs> oh, not me. So this goes back no, to panic. No, you're, you're not going to write person. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's say this way. Three out of four teachers agree. Yeah. With that. <laughs> uh, but the reality of it is, yeah. if Stephanie, if you finish two weeks early and don't do anything, that's still a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still a waste of time. And so, I don't have feedback. So I don't know. You don't how have feedback. So just sit but, you're like, yeah. I wonder what I wrote three weeks ago. But that your part, your no. concept, like we we have a scrum board in my in my classroom. And so when you when you talked about that, like for me, especially as somebody who teaches freshmen, there is no way that I'm going to say, and we I'm all PBL, that I'm gonna say, in two months, you're gonna be turning in this thing. And then I just expect that they know how to do that. And magically turn it in in two months. So, like the idea of breaking it down. Here's what we're gonna do today. And I like I love that that you talked about Aaron with the paragraphs. That's what I do in my class. We work on one paragraph at a time. But what I love about Edu protocols and what you're bringing up is it even gives a way to work through that one paragraph at a time or these steps, and that they continue to make it something that um, it's just that all iteration, you guys. Yeah. It's all iteration. Uh, and I love, I love, uh, I got a couple of comments I want to uh, share. Um, continual feedback, continual improvement. Stacy Klein, whoever she is, that was super smart. I'm kidding with you. I'm kidding with you. Uh, Thomas Boyle, 
level up. Like kids understand this in games. They understand they're going to lose, but they don't. How many times have kids failed in Minecraft, right? But they keep at it. So it's this iterative piece is if I keep noodling on this, I'll get it. Mm -hmm. And then um, what's another good one? Uh, Jamboard, Georgina shared Jamboard. Jamboard is amazing for math reps because you can drop that graphic organizer in there. Each kid's doing their own. And all you have to do is change the number every day. And Mike D wants to know if we're using Ecamm Live. Heck no. We're using StreamYard. (laughs) (laughs) Way better. Way better. (laughs) So uh, So, how much are we going to do this? We're going till four. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. No, no. Whatever, whatever time zone it is where you're at. <laughs> and speaking on SEL a little bit, social motion. Oh yeah. I mean, this is that's what this is about. I mean, I. Yeah. I'm gonna I, make a couple of statements, and then oh, you yeah. guys tell me if I'm crazy. All right. And I've already, I've already hinted at this, that kids will spontaneously tell you, "I'm getting better." That doesn't happen in most classrooms. So I'm going to start with something super technical. I would advise anybody that's liking this conversation on any level, read The End of Average by Todd Rose. Mm. The bell curve is racist. It was developed by the guy who invented eugenics. And he will tell you in his quotes that the reason he made it was to make sure that some people didn't succeed. I'm not going to be part of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this idea of, of SEL I think is super important. I'm going to say something I haven't really said publicly yet, but if you build a culturally responsive uh, school to any culture, so I'm, I'm half Swiss. So I'll stay out of all other cultures right now. I want a Swiss school. We're going to have Toblerones for lunch. We're going to have chocolate milk. I'm going to wear Lederhosen. Uh, We have cuckoo clocks in every room. It's completely Swiss centric. And then you put me in a bell curve. You're still kicking half of the kids to the curb. You've got to do both. I think one of the possibly the meanest thing you can do is truck kids down to the auditorium for a, uh, a, a an assembly on wellness and then take them back to the spelling bee where you eliminate and publicly humiliate them one after the other with no training. So we've got to get out of that mode. So you're not going to get the SEL you seek until your lesson design and your iteration and your ability for kids to be creative in class is present. You got to have both. You've got to have both. Your SEL will always underperform until you have those things going. And so one of the biggest subtle shifts on protocols is everybody's going to pass. Yeah, definitely. That's what that's all about. And I'll take time now. I have never never failed a child. My number one memory, my number one memory of first grade. Yeah, my number one memory of first grade. I realized that I would never get a blue star. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. They had charts on the wall and I looked at them and I was like, man, Tony's got a lot of golds and I have none. Mm -hmm. And when we got to about November, I was like, oh, this is just how the whole year is going to go. That's my main memory of first grade is that I'm never going to get a gold star. That's the SEL component. Mm -hmm. I didn't like doing worksheets. I wasn't engaged in worksheets, but I was getting judged on my worksheets Mm -hmm. as a person. And I'm not going to be a part of that in the classroom. Everybody can learn and everybody can do better. But if you only judge people on their worksheet activity, you're going to be disappointed and you're going to have a bell curve. Yep. Yeah. I know I have students in, in my classes that, you know, they, they come to the pathway that I teach in because it's project-based and because they quote, this is what they will say. They don't, necessarily love the way that school is in the in the traditional setting or they haven't done well and then I have some that are just gravitate there but I find myself when I have conversations with them about their ideas and writing and that oh my gosh look at this idea and how can you make this deeper and this is like you're really thinking here this is beautiful this is great writing and they will say I have never been told that I am a great writer before yeah yeah, yeah. And, and yeah they've but, never been they were getting thinking. F's for hamburger paragraphs. Yeah, right? like the insanity. Yeah, we, there was another great question that came up. Um, again, Dr. Ed, he is. I, I swear, oh, Dr. Yeah. Ed's on fire today. Yeah. Dr. Ed is always on fire. Um, but he was asking around where you start. I really do feel like this all this aligns oh. deeply with this conversation right now. So thank yeah, you, thank we, you for the layup, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> so that's where in Edgar protocols, uh, and this goes back to, I don't know what you guys are doing in 1999, but I was teaching fifth grade. Okay. 
And what I realized is that <laughs> Stephanie's like, oh, no. Um, I, okay, I, I realized. I don't know graphic, about Stephanie. I How realized. That the, <laughs> well, you might have been in my class then. Uh, <laughs> I just made peace with the fact that the kids that came into my class every year would not be good at what I want them to be good at. I just, I quit blaming them. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, so how can I turn this into a mini camp or a boot camp? Mm -hmm. And that was the birth of smart start, which is I'm going to teach them how to play the game at a super high level. And so basically smart start goes like this. Imagine uh, Stephanie, I don't know if you've considered this fully or, uh, well, I got two Stephanie. So that's really weird. I know it's uh, hard. Okay. Uh, we're imagine this Stephanie squared plus one <laughs> fine. Imagine if you did thin slides every day today. Favorite musical artist tomorrow, favorite shoe next day, favorite sports ball team and why you don't like sports ball, uh, favorite food people should not like right every day. Next week, when I say let's do a thin slide on parallel, you're like, Psh, I got this. OK, day one, let's iron chef your first iPod. Don't you don't even need the Internet. I want a picture and a couple things. And then we learn iron chef tomorrow, iron chef what you order at Kentucky Fried Chicken, and it's okay to say what you would not order, okay? No problem. But we were learning Iron Chef. Mm -hmm. And guess what? When those kids are presenting all day, guess what I'm doing? I'm tracking them like the Terminator. I'm like, ah, I see what you like. Ah, I see what you like. When I found out my sixth graders in 2002, their favorite album was Journey, Escape. And I was like, how do you guys even know about that? Uh, from our dad. And I was like, okay, if that's your jam, we're going to start every day with some Journey. <laughs> I'm getting into their heads. So smart start is the idea of teaching them how to learn for the first three or four days, not worrying about content. But when I'm done with that first week, we've done the worst presentation ever. Have you guys done that one yet? Mm -hmm. Okay. We do great. the worst presentation ever. We've done thin slides. We've done fast and curious on uh, hello kitty and TV shows from Nickelodeon. When week two hits, I know them. We're in each other's hearts. And I can teach him anything. And so that's the smart start piece. So to answer Ed's question in another way, um, it's both. And I think that's going to be huge with remote learning. I mean, I know we're still like undecisive of what next year is going to look like, but a lot of teachers are really worried about how do I build a relationships with kids that I haven't met in person? Yeah, right. And this could be your way in. Oh, yeah. You can totally do it this way too, because it, you're going to have the same interactions and, and, yeah. and, it's breaking up the pieces and it's not just talking at people the whole time. That's, yeah. that's the key. And the cool thing is you get your students who are more introverted or more polite, you know, maybe they're not talking over other people and mm -hmm. they're all interacting now. I, I'm like, wow, right on talking. <laughs> oh, I got to say good night to Georgina. She, she must be in a far away. Hi, She's Georgina, on yes, fire. Yes, You're yes. on fire today, Georgina. You have a good <laughs> sleep. <laughs> if she's she all the way in. Yeah. She, she's, He's far, far. She's far. Yeah. So, yeah. So I want to reiterate and go slower. I'm going to invest in teaching kids how to compare, how to summarize, mm -hmm. how to multiply and divide that first week, very fun ways that are revealing their personas and tastes to me. Um, and then week two, it's golden. I don't have to wait until October. How many of you have heard a teacher say this in October at the lunchroom? Ready? I mean, this is my teacher impression. <laughs> Uh, went too fast. I'm going to have to restart. <laughs> right? Am I wrong? You are not wrong. At all. I'm restarting the whole thing. If you smart start, you don't have to do that because the relationships are there from the beginning. The processes are there from the beginning. And, um, you know, I, I don't buy into the Harry Wong thing about not smiling till Christmas. I think yeah. it's gonna make a, that's going to make a long ass year for everybody is what that's going to make. <laughs> Instead of reading Harry Wong, just read uh, John's book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's book three. We're working on that. We're gonna oh, yeah. uh, we're gonna Yay. reverse engineer Harry Wong's book and do all protocol mindset all the way through. Same table that. of contents, better book, and then uh, Edge of Protocols math version is getting ready to drop. That's exciting. Oh, or just math, wall to wall, just math. You and know, I mean, some of the many things that that I really love. So the school, the pathway that I keep mentioning that I teach in is a is a new tech network um, pathway. Uh -huh. So it's all right, all PDL. But what I what I appreciate most, right, is that that gives you like a a, a large frame. 
that, right. that I get for how to enter into into like project based learning and a guide and a guide through how to like get my students to question all these pieces. But Edu Protocols fills in some of those gaps for me as a teacher because right it all of a sudden I have I, ways that are entry of entry events that aren't me creating them, right? It's ways that are student initiated entries into something. Um, and so I just appreciate that whatever mm -hmm. model, wherever you are in terms of teaching, these are pieces that can be applied. Um, and it, it doesn't serve to like conflict with what you're doing. It just enhances it, makes it better. And I, so, I just- So I'm gonna reinterpret that for folks. Yeah. Okay. As 11 year old John, worst thing I can see in a textbook, reflect on the story. <laughs> <laughs> Too big. Because <laughs> this, this is what you're going to get from 11 year old John. This is a good story. I like this story. This story might could be a book. I bet my sister read this story in your class. I'm just <laughs> wandering around in the desert, right? <laughs> and then memories, Walter, don't forget free lifetime tech support. Just track me down on Twitter. Um, <laughs> whereas if you take the good old somebody want to but so then model, mm. Mm. and I then see. you and then you practice it the first week on TV commercials. Ooh. Now in October, November, when you go big time PBL, Rothstein, I'm going last names now. When yeah. you go big time PBL and you tell the kids, go do your research, research three web pages, and I need somebody want to but so then, you're going to get a thing. But if you say reflect, they're going to put this web page is good. <laughs> I bet they made this web page in Squarespace. My brother made a web page. He's in high school. I don't need that, bro. I don't need that. So there's this continuum of the shut up sheets, which is compliance, compliance. Uh -huh. uh, my favorite dirty trick with seventh and eighth graders was uh, they would read me their open ended question. I go, no, that's wrong. And they're like, how could that be wrong? And I go, says right here in teacher's edition, answers may vary. That's not what you said. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, you're kidding me. So, <laughs> so, but the point is we, you have to take them off of the compliance model of the shut up sheets and the workbooks and the, the things like that. And you have to slide them through the protocols level and then they can, they'll naturally turn into project people, yeah. but you can't make the jump from this to that. You can't do it in one move. You can't. Mm -hmm. And Gag Kentucky asked if they're going to get free copies. Yeah, they did. They did. Look at that. I'm, they put I'm, it out there. They did. If you, guys, if you guys have a methodology, I'm more than happy to ship people a couple of free books. Look at that. How cool is that? I'm not here to sell books, people. I'm not here to sell I books. I know. That's it, why we give it all away. Awesome do a randomizer really fast. Okay. Uh, Thomas, I know. That would be fun. Thomas Boyle asked about Cyber right. Sandwich. Can I do Cyber Sandwich Yeah, real quick? yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, please. So I love, well, I love hecklers. So I like Thomas already because he's in there <laughs> asking the hard questions. Um, the the cyber sandwich, we mentioned this earlier, but uh, some folks joined late. It's basically the reworked uh, test and punish um, think, pair, share. So I'm going to do my stand-up comedian routine. Okay. Uh, I hope you like my lecture on fill in the blank. Uh, I hope you were listening because I have popsicle sticks in this and I will randomly draw you out to see if you were listening during that, which wh what's that doing f to my brain right now? I'm way down here in fight or flight, right? I'm not up here. I'm like, mm -hmm. don't pick me. Don't pick me. Don't pick me. And then <laughs> I've got Rostin in there three times because she needs to be more random. Oh, amazingly <laughs> enough, I got Stephanie. <laughs> so now I've had kids read a thing or watch a thing. What have they done besides think about it? Nothing. And then back to the panic now model. If I give both Stephanie's three minutes to talk about my thing, what are the odds they talk about something else for 2.8 minutes until I say something that sounds like this? Only 30 seconds. And then you look at each other and you're like, crap, we need something. We've all done this in adult PD, right? I'm I'm not I'm not wrong. Well, maybe not Rothstein. She's super organized. Uh so now what happens is in a in a cyber sandwich, I give kids a PowerPoint a YouTube video, a web page. They're in a five slide Google slide deck. Stephanie one reads mm -hmm. the article and take notes. You can use any framework you want. You can use an avid note taking model. You can do somebody want to, but so then you can do a note notice, note wonder, note in anything else. Meanwhile, the other Stephanie is reading the same article or a different one if I'm feeling devilish. And she's taking notes on slide two. 
And so I might ask for things like, give me two textual evidences or claims. Um, give me a, a direct quote. Give me three facts. Give me a key vocab word and define it. Very normal work, almost like part of a frayer, right? When And I'm TWA, and so I'm walking around, chug, chug, chug. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm, over, I'm, I'm seeing what everybody's doing. Okay, stay, uh, Stephanie squared, you guys are good. Move to slide three. Slide three is a Venn diagram. And mm -hmm. so you both copy paste in your stuff. And in the middle, you build that. Now, here's the key. Kids are doing what? They're actually researching, looking stuff the, up, typing. And, yeah. and they're typing. They're not just, because mm -hmm. most think pair shares end with nothing. And this is the end of the think pair share. Ready? Stacy Klein, <laughs> what's your idea? And Stacy does this one because this ends it. They took mine. Ah, I like that one. <laughs> Once that happens, whoop, it's over. In my model, everybody's going to read. Everybody's going to type. Love everybody's going to compare. And the Socratic seminar doesn't happen until that moment. Yeah. Once they've completed their Venn diagrams, then I do this. And I, I've got three things I ask them. They know what's coming because it's structured. I need big idea. So I use a little mind blown uh, emoji. Big idea. Number two is Bazinga. Uh, Bazinga is a string of facts. Give me three cool facts. So one is a giant idea, but the other could be three cool facts. And then the other one is, you know, the little girl, um, GIF, where she's doing like this. And she, so that one is, we had nothing in common, but tell me why. Mm. Okay. And so each group reports on that. They know it's coming. It's not a surprise. Everybody's going to sh share. Everybody's going to share what they typed. Now I clean up the mess. I, I clean up misconceptions. Uh, my sixth graders one time tried to tell me that the ancient Greeks invite, invented sandals. I was like, bro, if you can find out on a webpage, you're going to make 20 bucks US right now. And I gave them two minutes to try to find it. And at the end, they were like, okay, Crippo, we can find it. You're right. <laughs> so let them do that, right? And so then at the end, after we Socratic and make sure everything's cool, guess what? You each write a quick paragraph. And you just cyber sandwiched. Uh, what grade level, Stephanie, one? I'm grade level nine. Okay, Stephanie, two. What subject? I Let's do math. Doesn't Ooh. matter. Still going to cyber sandwich. Let's Ooh. talk about, let's do this. We talk about non-Euclidean geometry but when do we ever learn about this euclid guy because he's a person <laughs> in 15 minutes i can have my kids talking about euclid right That's stacy klein exactly. what subject uh science eighth what grade. grade okay eight oh you weren't supposed to do that okay science eighth grade let's, <laughs> right. let's do some cell division do you think your slides are really different than the cell division slides at harvard i bet they are <laughs> what's my prep time i put in a link i put in a link i share yeah. it we, we're gone okay give me another give me another grade level give me another subject we'll do it again let's do 10th grade history 10th grade history battle of the bulge mm -hmm. let her rip mm -hmm. love it and i'm not going to show them the crappy movie of telly savalas it was really bad mm -hmm. And so Tom, Thomas says, sounds good. Thomas, I will be, if you go to eduprotocols.com, there's templates you can download. And yeah. if you look at the hashtag uh, for eduprotocols, there's people sharing them like crazy. And if you do teach some history, definitely check out Number Mania. Also a great option. If you want to win a copy of Protocols, fill out our form, and then I'll put it in the random uh, name uh, wheel, and then we'll pick a couple winners. And yeah. then I'm gonna, I'll do my bad t-shirt impression, and I'll mail it to you someday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you share my screen. We spin your name. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Okay. Other questions from the audience. I have a question. We know you're going back to the classroom, John. You just announced, I think today, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. yeah I watched that Facebook. Blog. What edu protocol are you going to use first? Oh, good question, Steph. Ooh. Wait for you. Uh, I feel like probably fast and curious and thin slides. I think it'd be a one-two punch, fast and curious and thin slides, because it's the success rate's gonna go floop. And then when I teach them how to make better slides, the buy-ins are pretty quick, right? So th those are probably my first two. Um, my goal is gonna be to do probably I'm gonna pick about five or six and do the same ones every day. All Steve, week long. There's a there's a question about where where the form is that you mentioned. I uh, dropped it in the chat. Um, I think you might need to drop it here. I if it was yeah, I think it's in the private. No, it's not in the private. No, chat. it won't. It won't let you, uh, you put it um, as you if it's a link. So 
And then the book, I, the book I mentioned earlier that I think is super critical to this mindset is uh, The End of Average by Todd Rose. Mm. It's You guys, you will feel like uh, when um, Neo in The Matrix, remember when he breaks the code and everything and he can see the world for what it really is? That's what you'll feel like. You will be literally going, oh my God, I have had this crazy mean filter on for my whole life. And oh. it's amazing. Uh, basically, uh, I'll give you an, another little snippet from it. Uh, it turns out that the book that they use for criterion reference testing, does that sound familiar? Yeah. And Norm, mm -hmm. The book that established that, if you read the forward to that book, it says this book is invalid because you cannot test for intelligence in one try. But mm -hmm. given the scale of the need, we're going to substitute millions of results and average those. It literally says that in the forward of the book that has us under its thumb for test scores. You can average the the uh, like insurance for car insurance that works because that's the average behavior of a group. Mm. But you cannot look at a GPA and determine somebody's success because people th there's three main themes in it. It's jaggedness, which is you don't see people's talents um, and they're varied. Just because I'm good at math doesn't mean I'm good at statistics. Just because I'm good at English doesn't mean I'm good at spelling, right? So it's, it's jumbly. The next one is um, pathways. Most of us have gotten where we are in a nonlinear fashion. Can I get an amen? Amen on that one. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things to do is get a room full of superintendents and go, how many of you were not 4.0s? And on average, mm -hmm. about half of them are not 4.0s. So then I do this. So how could you become a superintendent? If you weren't a 4.0 and then I do this, how many of you are emergency credential teachers? Usually 10 to 15%. Wow. Wow. So pathways say that the way that we move through life is not a predictable thing. And it's not, we used to get told, go to school, get your BA, work in a factory, get a gold watch. That is gonzo. That mm -hmm. world is over. And then the last one is context, which says that people will exhibit different traits and strengths given the context. I guarantee you guys have kids in your class that are famous jujitsu kids or travel volleyball kids or go-kart racers or horse show competitors who consistently get Fs and Ds in class because mm -hmm. that's not their context. And so what I'm always trying to do is make my context work for them instead of making them stick into the school paradigm. And that's totally. where this, it, feels, this it feels like so much of it, it aligns to um, the idea that what you are doing is soft skill building, which they could apply to anywhere. Right. 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 And then the content fills in in whatever oh. class, but, but like every, when I talk in my classes, I keep saying like, my whole goal is to make you a better person. Like mm -hmm. we just want to become better people. You can always learn. Mm -hmm. We can always keep yeah. learning. Like if we can build great people, and, and shout out, shout out to Jen Garner, four thirty-two yeah. out of a class of four thirty-three. And yeah. Jen, I'm with you. I'm with you. I love your, I love your movie career, and you dated Ben Affleck, so she's doing <laughs> great. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, hey, I'm, I'm a solid two point nine GPA all the way through K eight and nine twelve, right? But what do I do for a living now? Teach, teach, and because for me, um, making classrooms more uh, effective for kids and teachers is fixing a past sin. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's for me, it's filling a hole that I, I've, I have empathy for understanding what it's like to be a kid in that class. That's getting marginalized and minimized and passed over and never, I, I literally bring my yearbook to school and I show the kids, this is my freshman yearbook. It has zero signatures. That's what school was like for me. Yeah. My first memory of kindergarten was I'm the only kid that can't tie my shoes. Mm. Like I was fighting an uphill fight all the way through and I'm a July one birthday, which meant yeah. I was, I was nine months younger than almost everybody. That's and, that's I, and, and I thought I wasn't smart and, until I actually held myself back. Uh, after I graduated from high school, I went and worked at Mammoth Lakes for a year and skied. And I came back to junior college one year older. School was a snap wow. once that changed. And I think we need to allow for that. And we yeah. don't. And the bottom line is you can get into a CSU, a California State University, with a 2.8 GPA. So why are you squandering your youth on a 4.2 that is possibly going to earn you nothing? 
there's got to be a balance point of there. I'm not denigrating people with a high GPA. What I'm saying is, uh, that's awesome. Like my one daughter, she's a 4.2. She loves that stuff, right? My other two kids are educational minimalists. They're like, what's the most I can cheat and still feel good about myself? <laughs> but yeah, we have, uh, we have uh, 30 names now, you guys, if you want to do the wheel spinning. And then, but John, I think your point is really, really valid because um, especially like in the cycling world, the Lantern Rouge is the last person over the course. That's the most celebrated person. Sure, yeah. the first one is very, very heroic, but the yeah. last person, mm -hmm. and my husband always says, you know, that person worked twice as hard as everybody else on the course. And I want to right. give a shout out to Robin Larrabee. I now teach my most loathed subject. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And then uh, Whitney Anderson, her dad said he had the lowest GPA mm -hmm. at med school, but he's still a doctor. Hey, mm -hmm. George Patton almost flunked out of West Point. He ended up okay. Yeah. MacArthur's mom, George uh, uh, Douglas MacArthur's mom, when he was at West Point, she rented an apartment across the street from West Point so that she could see in his window to make sure he was studying. Wow. This We cannot judge people on the norm, right? Because a GPA is not, if you look at the Herbert, Herbert Hoover poem, uh, that he wrote, which is the persistence uh, poem. There's one in there that says the world is full of edu educated derelicts. And I hope it's not that bad nowadays, Herbert Hoover. But just a degree is not a guarantee of success slash happiness slash money. Notice how I didn't say be rich, right? Mm -hmm. Because I see kids spend $200,000 on college. And what do you get out of that? Sometimes not very much. Sometimes they switch careers. Sometimes they're teachers now. Like, uh, I love this story. My wife was visiting a classroom as an AP classroom. And one of the, one of the high school kids said, I'm going to UC Santa Barbara to be a kindergarten teacher and big props to the AP teacher. She's like, honey, nobody needs you to go to a UC to be a kindergarten class teacher. They don't care. Go to yeah. a CSU, save yourself a hundred grand. You'll be fine. It's fine. It's all good. You'll be fine. They need teachers. You're going to get a job. Save yourself a hundred grand. <laughs> and I agree with what memories just popped up there too, is that teachers who struggled in school have empathy because they can understand the, other. it would be like, uh, if you've ever had your order work uh, screwed up at Starbucks and then you work there, mm -hmm. it makes sense. Right. Hey Steph, when you're ready, I'll share the screen. Do uh, it. Do yeah. it. So just grab that sheen, sheen square. I'm going to grab that sheen square now and uh, try <laughs> to my square. I think that's what we can call it from now on, Stacey. I actually like it. <laughs> okay, uh, here we go. Hey, this is as easy as Zoom, thank goodness, since it's the first time I've been on StreamYard, y'all. Okay. Look at you. Ooh, fancy wheel and everything. We learned how to do this on OCQ, uh, John, at our little ed tech. Oh. Table. So much stuff. Looks like, uh, oh, Darren. Oh, Stephanie. Okay, so Darren. Darren Petalunga. Okay. I tried to be nice. I didn't put myself on it. I know, me too. Why? Well, I, I put bought myself it. on there. I knew she would. I knew she would be the first one to put her name on there. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, send, okay. I'll, send you guys, I'll send you guys the new book when it comes out. Cool. And John, did you want to do more than one? Yeah, we can do another one. Let's get crazy. Okay. Woo! Book with an S on the end of it. <laughs> Whitney, is it Whitney? Is it Whitney? Oh, wow, that's, that's, that's high drama right there. Congrats to the winners. That was just straight up Price Is Right drama. Thanks, John. <laughs> yeah, thanks, John. That was awesome. Yeah. You're welcome. Session. It like such a pleasure to sit in. I I felt pretty privileged to get to sit in this this little space and talk to you because. I, if for other people, I mentioned to John that like my claim to fame is that I find myself always sitting behind him at different conferences. So I'll tweet the back of his head. No, the back of my head. I love it. Can I need to make a t-shirt of that. Can Send we the back of your head, John? Yeah, this is the first time I, I <laughs> That's what it always looks like. But today I got to talk to the front of your face. So I was so happy. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, let's do a recap. Let's do another show in a couple weeks. I'll yeah. get Marlena in here too. We'll do the whole fam damnly. We will. That would be amazing. Yeah, we can't thank you enough. So congrats 
Congrats to the winners. There's lots of, um, and I know John mentioned it, but if you go there, like you can download a bunch of the the free protocols yeah. that are out there. If you don't have the book, if you want to get started, um, that's how I got started before. And I got I'll, I'll tell you how hardcore we are on um, on the free part. Uh, we routinely scan uh, teachers pay teachers. And if we see edu protocols being sold there, we ask people to either make them free or take it down. Yeah. Because these are not to be sold. They are not to be sold. That's awesome. Agreed. All right. Well, make sure you leave us feedback at the bit.ly. Um, it's GEG Global Feedback. Make sure you capitalize. It's also in the chat. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and this was amazing. I learned so much. I feel like I learned every single time more and more. And I cannot wait to try this out next school year. Oh, and John, I people want to know when is math protocols dropping? Like people We don't know exactly. It's, I'm sorry, it's, Jen, we don't have an answer yet. The writing is done, so it's all in, okay? The writing's in, and uh, we're co-authoring with uh, uh, Lisa Nokowski, the birth mama of math reps, and Jeremiah Roosh, who's one of the hot rodest math teachers I've seen. They've both been protocol people for years, but they're math people. Marlena and I are not math people. So we're supporting the book. The book is written. Now it needs to go to the editors. And I'll tell you on the last book, we had 7,200 edits. So it'll take a little while, but it's published on demand. So once we are locked in, we're gone. So we're hoping to have it drop before school opens. That's our goal. But the, yeah, the basic already, thing is in. I think I read your second book before it was published too. That yeah, was I did. Yeah, I, I got it right when it came out. I it. And then just to close up, I want to quote my co-author Marlena. And she said, that, you know, the, the edge of protocols aren't complex, but there are lots of nuances to get it right. And uh, a real life example that we had was we tell teachers to do the fast and cur curious. You do your quizzes twice until they get it right. And, and every day, twice till they get it. And one of the teachers that we went back and visited about two months later said, I like the fast and curious, but it takes forever. And we said, well, what do you mean? It should take like 10 minutes. She goes, oh no, I just have my kindergarten kids take the test over and over again until they passed. It takes like an hour. And we're like, oh, oh, it's so close, so close. <laughs> no, twice a day, not a, not until they pass. So it's, it's a lot like a grilled cheese sandwich, right? You can, I can teach you to make one pretty quick, but then maybe you want to add some Parmesan to the outside and maybe you start experimenting with mayonnaise on the outside instead of butter. That actually works, by the way. Um, there's a lot of nuances to get the golden crispy crust that you are looking for. And that's that's the fun part of this is you can make a grilled cheese pretty quick and then you can come back tomorrow and go, that was really good. I wonder if I use Gruyere, how that would be. I wonder if I had pickles. And so that's part of the magic of it. It's it's like cooking where you're just tinkering and tinkering and tinkering always to make it better. And then sharing with your friends. Hey, look, I made a triple decker grilled cheese. And Stephanie squared are like, what? We never thought of three decks. And then Stacy's like, that's nothing. I have four. And, and that's the beauty of it, right? That's the cool, fun, the riffing. It's like music. It's like hip hop. It's like jazz. We're, we're, we're changing things and adapting and adding new spices. And it's super fun. Thank you. Thank you, John. I'm going to let you have the last word. So okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And we can't wait to schedule the next one. Maybe we'll do that right after this. Yeah. All right, Avid. What is happening in June? What is happening in June? Oh, uh, level one boot camp. Make sure you sign up for the Google Level One Boot Camp. Woo, and we're going to watch a quick video to close us out about the boot camp. I love working out Google tricks. I love working out Google tricks. Ain't no problem that we can't fix. Ain't no problem that we can't fix. One, two, three, four, Global Gate Training Call. One, two, three, four, Global Gate Training Call. Five, six, seven, eight, sign them now, don't be late. Five, six, seven, eight, sign them now, don't be late. My gig, my gig, your gig, your gig, Global Gate. Global Gate.